Hey guys, I'm in a hurry. It's Tech Stacks Rewind. I want everybody to watch this uh, video though in slow motion if you can, so it's kind of the same exact time. Today on the show, we had uh, the Go Hour, our final thoughts heading into Ole Miss, Texas A&M. OB, as always, was great, wearing his Jimbo Fisher sweater, the same one that he got at the gas station. Good times there. Go time with uh, Wegman. We did talk about uh, Connor Wegman. It looks like he's potentially going to get the start here. Caroline Fenton joined the show with uh, Billy. And, of course, the final countdown. The McKinney brothers were great, as always. Billy was awesome. All that and more is Texas Rewind. But give this offense an early a chance to play with a lead because the defense created some havoc. Yeah. Um, I, you know, if you made it, what I don't want to see is I don't want to see a And M get a uh, a two touchdown deficit or a two score deficit again. Right. To start off, you know I don't want to see a bunch of a bunch of uh, pre snap penalties. And by the way, things I want to see in the future, I want to see this staff use the portal differently than they have, and mm -hmm. I think we all can agree with that. Yeah. And. And I actually said this during the offseason. I want to see them go after older guys. You don't have to be the best. In, I, I want the best. But I want dudes that are like, like how old is Hendon Hooker? He's about to be 25, He's like right? 20, yeah. All right. I want older guys to help with younger guys. I want men who've got man strength to help, who've been around the block a little bit. I want to see offensive line, at least two guys that are old, right? And I know that, you know, with Layden or Layden potentially could go to the NFL, but with, um, with Ruben and with Bryce, they'll be in their third year. But I still want guys who have got games, plural, more than 20-plus games starting joining this offensive line. Okay. I, I, can, I can, you know, buy into that. Um, You've got to go in the portal and, you know, tar uh, identify areas where you're in need and then target. So I would like to see a linebacker. You know, uh, an experienced linebacker. There's no reason in today's world that if you have a a weakness somewhere, a perceived weakness, that you don't go find it well, at Texas you know, A&M. Now, now, they tried to do that last year, and they tried to get the, the tackle from Tennessee that went to Oklahoma, yep. Morris, and that didn't work out, so then they took the consolation prize, which was Jameer Johnson. Thank you for your effort, Jameer. But, you know, it, it, he was serviceable. Yep. But – you know, I hope, serviceable now. Yeah, I hope they, they, they get guys who are more than serviceable. Yeah, but like at any position, if you think linebacker is a weakness and, yes, you have a stud coming in, go get a linebacker. Yeah. Go get one. You can today. There's no reason not to fix holes when you're Texas A&M. You've got all the resources in the world. And beyond the perception that we're in right now, this cloud, this storm that we're in, go get where you need help. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I want to see that. I want to see, you know what I want to see? I want to see that $30 million fund that was supposedly uh, there for NIL for AM. I yeah. want it to, 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 be, to become a realization. Quarterback situation. Mm -hmm. well, um, give us a little more clarity. Clarity. Um, I, think, I think you'll see Wigman get the nod on Saturday. It's just, that's the way the week. And I've, that's the way the week's been going. So barring a, a kind of miraculous uh, shoulder heel for Haynes King, um, I think, I think Wigman gets to go. And I think we're to a point in the week, too, where you probably need Wigman to go anyway. Yeah. I mean, how much practice can you miss? So Haynes, I know the first couple of days of the week, I don't even know if he threw. And then uh, yesterday, I guess, would have been – the last day of practice that he could have done anything. So, yeah, I fully expect we see 15 get the start for the first time, uh, first career start. And I hope it's like Shea Patterson did to the Aggies at Kyle Field. I think it was 2016. Yeah, that would be 2016 where uh, he came in, freshman, similar style of player to Connor Wigman, uh, especially at that age. They kind of beat the – scrambling ability out of him for whatever reason at Michigan and but uh no Shea Patterson came in he beat Jake Hubenack it was two backups playing there that day and A&M went up early and uh Patterson I think finally kind of finally kind of realized that he had some pretty badass receivers at Ole Miss at the time under Hugh Freeze and just started winging it and running and then that opened things up so I hopefully 
Uh, Wigman can return the favor. That'd be incredible. But what, what do you think is the blueprint to stop Ole Miss and the way they run the ball so effectively? Is it really the linebackers popping in? Is I mean, What did you see that got them to stop uh, running the ball effectively? It, I was really just trying to force the ball into Jackson Dart's hands. That's the key to beating Ole Miss because I don't think that he can win a game with the ball in his hands. And that's that comes down to stopping the run because that's what Ole Miss mm-hmm. wants to do. They won the to run the ball down your throat with with Quinchon Judkins and Zach Evans, who I think are two of the best running backs. It was one of the best running back duos in the country. That's what they want to do. They want to run the ball because they've got good running backs and because Jackson Dart, I just don't think is the guy. Um, The key there is be really, really aggressive up front and give a bunch of different decoy looks. That's what Matt House, I think, did was, you know, being very creative with the way that he used some of those those versatile defensive players you know using them kind of as a spy in the backfield and kind of shifting them up front to be able to 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 stop those gaps that was really the key uh was using those linebackers there and using them creatively we got bama off this week um is there a Mm -hmm. it's the cocktail party right i mean this is usually the biggest game in the SEC of, of any weekend. And it will be talked about the most because mm-hmm. it's Georgia right now and it's Georgia, Florida. But is there a game – is that the most intriguing game in the SEC for you this weekend or is there another one out there? It's really sad because when the cocktail party isn't interesting, I feel like the SEC just isn't as interesting. Like this is like the least interesting Florida-Georgia game in, in a long time, which I think is sad. I forget about this year. I would love to see them win Saturday and, and, and fix it. I guess, why couldn't y'all fix it in 96 and what was different? What, what allowed the program to kind of go in a different trajectory well, after that? The reality is, is that when you're in the middle of one of those seasons, Billy, mm-hmm. and you go into the off season, you come into the season thinking you're one thing, and then it doesn't start out on that path, yeah. which is very similar to what's going on now. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I don't want to say the locker room starts to fall apart, but the confidence in the team definitely starts to, to fall apart. And it's hard to get that back. You know, losing just like winning is contagious. Mm-hmm. And the more you lose, the more it starts to become acceptable and the more you start to expect it in those fourth quarter tight games. Even if you're not saying it out loud. Kind of like when's the other shoe going to Yeah, yeah. like this well, is, we've been in this situation before and we just lost. Right, here we go. It's just here like, we go again. These, the, like these kids are human beings, you know yeah. what I mean? You, you expect young. them to be gladiators, no emotion, whatever, and to just feed off the moment. Well, that's not true because sometimes something can happen and just like you said, oh, here we go again. Or it could be the alternatives like, hell yeah, man, we're down, but look, just look at, look at last week. Look what happened, you know, and we, when we won a game or whatever, that kind of thing. You can use that versus – a bad thing. Now the worst is happening. We're done. I think we think of y'all in college, college age football players as like warriors. <laughs> like you go to battle, yeah. you're like, uh, you know, gladiator or, or Brad Pitt in Troy. And it's just like, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's 18 to 20 year old. Kids. And there's yeah, the body, the bodies somewhere. of gladiators, but the brains of kids. Yeah. yeah. They just haven't, haven't matured yet and yeah. don't, haven't been in these types and, of circumstances. And the people, out there with maturity and sense are the coaches. And that's mm-hmm. why a lot of this in college football comes from the top, man. The mm-hmm. people that you're around, you set the tone mentally, emotionally, all that stuff. Your guys got to set the energy and all that. And they can feed off an energetic coach too as well. I think you guys nailed it though with the – it's it's losing is contagious and yeah. it does. And that, that, that here we go again can creep in on a play, yep. on a bad, you know, a missed block, you know, a bad possession. Yeah. A, a, a ten points. And you yeah. can't tell me if we if we'd have won that game in Alabama on the last play, there's no way we lose to South Carolina. No, I agree. We 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 have a yeah. different mindset in that fourth quarter. I guarantee you we win that game. And it happened. It happened like you can go to any any game and any point in time, and you can always go back and think about teams that that were like we're behind, but we're still going to win this game. I can tell you the alternative side. Uh, we were we were up and uh, by eleven, and Tom Brady's over there after he <laughs> like won. Uh, I think his first Super Bowl was like two thousand two, and I'm sitting over there. We're uh, we got ten wins. All we need to do is just win this game, and we go to the playoffs. Then it'd be put us at eleven. So eleven point uh, lead. We're we're down. I mean, we're up by 11. They're down. They got about two minutes left. I look at Tim Ruddy 
And I'm like, man, we got a shot. Maybe he's like, don't, uh, don't, you know, he's just like, he's like a 10 year vet at <laughs> Tom the time. Brady. Yeah. yeah. He's like, just calm down. Yeah. And then boom, what does he do? He leads them down for a Quick touchdown score. and a two point conversion. So they're over there alternatively going, Oh, we got this. It's yeah. Tom, you know? And so then we kick, we have, we come out, we get the ball, we, they kick the ball, we fumble in the end zone and the, we return it to like the, the 12 yard line and we're there at place in New England. Screaming, yelling, mm-hmm. boom! We don't do anything. We punt it. What does he do? Release him down a field goal. Overtime. They get the ball. Boom! Score. Yep. I mean, it's like that kind of thing. And then Seth gets to be on a ten-win team that didn't make the playoffs. Two of them, by the way. I'm, that's like wow. that could really? be in the record. The Browns books. too. I don't know. I haven't like, tried to research Seth. that too much. In Wasn't, weren't you on a good Browns team? I was one of the one rare, of the rare ten good Browns wins. teams. No playoffs. Who was the two times? Uh, which year? Uh, with the Browns, Brown, uh, Derek Anderson, he had a great year that oh, year. Kind of, kind of hard to make the playoffs when you got guys running around the sidelines going, "We got this, boys." Yeah, I didn't we're say we to, got this. We're going. I to like the whispered. Dance. I whispered it too. <laughs> it's right over, Brady. Like, we got it. It's over. You're done, Brady. <laughs> 2002. It's the end for you, Tom. <laughs> All right, we're gonna close out the show. Uh, Nick, tell the people what to do. Oh, they need to like, subscribe, comment, share, uh, retweet, tweet it. Yeah, that's about it. Pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you guys on Monday.